All right, Module 13, this week's film, Pulp Fiction. I'm sure most of you have seen it. I would imagine you have, if not this, uh, some of uh, some of the other work from Tarantino, the mid-90s. The reason that I still keep it in rotation as far as this course goes is because of its creative use of uh, manipulating story time. Uh, so much like we saw last week in Run Lola Run, where we had three versions of the same story, in this film you have three different stories and overlapping characters. They they move in and out of three uh, three uh, little mini films that that could almost stand on their own. If you haven't watched the whole thing, I'll give you a warning. It's, uh, there's graphic violence, content scenes, excessive racist language. It was very shocking at the time that it first came out. Um, and if it's just too much for you, I completely understand. Just get to me early in the week, and I'll assign another movie um, for you. Um, what some of the things that I want you to look for in the film is the dialogue. Um, he's known uh, within the industry as being a great uh, screenwriter, and and actors love working on his films because of the words that he uses and how real it seems uh, when he writes his scripts. Um, topics for him are often very violent, and we have that here with this film. The, the cinematography as a whole is masterful. Creative use of sound, he's obviously a fan of popular music, certainly from the last century, and he uses that in many of his films, he uses it here, and uh, he uses it both as part of the film, so his, his characters can hear it at times. Um, and then also as just part of the soundtrack. You do have your multiple stories here. We'll look at that in a second. And then uh, it, there are comedic moments in it. There's, there's uh, scenes in here that are very, very funny. And they're meant to uh, very directly lighten the mood of the more intense scenes. So non-traditional narrative story arc. And it's because of how he manipulates the story time within the linear time of the movie. So, for example, uh, in the past, most Hollywood writers would have felt that they had to uh, do one of two things with their protagonist. Their protagonist generally would walk off into the sunset, so to speak, and live happily ever after. Or, if the writer was bold, um, they would kill off the protagonist to look for some deeper connection uh, with the audience and the protagonist. What's so clever uh, about this film is that uh, Tarantino does both. So as a reminder here, this is what our traditional uh, narrative arc looks like. We talked about this last weekend before, and that's not what we'll see in the movie. What we see in the movie here is it opens in the grill. Uh, it moves to the beginning of the scenes uh, in the apartment where they're, they're uh, sent there to get the, um, the briefcase for Marcellus. Uh, they uh, achieve that and they take it to Marcellus. That's where we are introduced to, to Butch, his character. Uh, Vincent's assigned a task to take uh, Marcellus's wife out. To dinner they do, she overdoses. Then we see a flashback of Butch's youth, then Butch's fight. And then Butch uh, is gonna flee the country um, because he knows that he's in trouble with Marcellus. And uh, he goes back to his apartment to, to pick up an item that's important to him. And there he finds Vincent. And this is where he kills Vincent. And, and in a traditional story, you couldn't do anything else with Vincent as a character. And that's not what happens here. So um, we see that uh, Butch runs over Marcellus. They end up being captives. Um, 
that sequence ends and then we go back to uh, the apartment scene where uh, they extract the boy and it actually takes place linearly before they would have arrived at, at the nightclub and that's where the boy is accidentally shot and then we come back to the grill where the movie opened but in reality now if we looked at how these things really take place and there's there's a short six minute video i think it's six minutes uh uh on the context links page and it actually rearranges the film in this order which is the chronological um events and how it plays out and this is really how you would see the film if it played out chronologically and and what's so clever here is that it it is if you watch the same exact film but in this order you have a completely different movie you have a completely different movie the, the way that it is written is uh creative it's sophisticated intelligent and uh it makes Pulp Fiction, the classic that it's become. So rather than explain through this part, just watch the, the short context link. Uh, it's the only one that I'm asking you to watch this week and you can see how this plays out or would play out. But by rearranging these events, he creates a really different film. Uh, the first time through it when people watched it, just trying to keep track of what was coming next and what was going on um, made it uh, a very interesting watch. Um, and then the fact that he gets to do both things, kill his protagonist, and then at the end of the movie, <laughs> he gets to still walk off into the sunset, so to speak, is uh, extremely clever. Again, cinematography, excellent use of light and color. Um, you have amazing uh, acting performances here, uh, both by um, Travolta and Jackson. Um, and in fact, Travolta's career at the time uh, in the early 90s had kind of hit a plateau, if not even uh, started to recede. And for Tarantino to cast him in the film, was um was a huge risk uh one that paid off and then gives travolta a, a second career as an actor but you have uh all you all your minor actors as well are are just uh, superb stunning uh, great editing um he, he does have a really wonderful sense of rhythm and it syncs to the images uh very well so i mentioned before uh, great sound effects, sophisticated sound altogether, and uh, wonderful use of pop popular music. Um, I'm going to close with this. Uh, the movies, and most of his movies, as, as I mentioned up front, are violent. It's a topic that he's been asked an awful lot about, uh, to the point where I, I think he no longer e even addresses it. But what in his mind, as, as, a, um, as a filmmaker and then a fan of cinema, um, he makes a clear distinction between violence in cinema and then violence in real life. And he makes no connection between the two. Um, and in fact, here's a quote from one of the French New Wave guys, which says, it's not blood, it's red meaning that it's not real, it's just a color. And then here's a quote where he does, uh, this is before he, he really stops uh, talking about it, but uh, for him, it's, it's like he says here, if, if you want to go see a film about dancing, you're going to see dancing, and, and we're not sure that that necessarily triggers other people to go out and then take up dancing. Um, and I think that that's his perspective and that's how he, he feels very, very strongly about 
the fact that he can he can utilize violence as a tool in his films and not have any connection with that coming back to the real world. So that's something that you're going to have to decide for yourself. Um, the, so far, I keep, as I said before, the movie in uh, for the writing and the importance of understanding how story structure can be manipulated in cinema. I think it's a cornerstone uh, to the development of cinema, and, and that's why I keep the film.